Hi, I am Nazan Mohammadi from Kerta University. I'm going to demonstrate Chapter 5 lab of CCNA Security version 1.2. In this lab, you are going to configure IPS using CLI on one router and CCP on the other router. Then we test the functionality of IPS on both sides. You are going to uh, load the, signa the uh, IPS signature package using the TFTP server and configuring the public crypto key using CLI and CCP. The topology of this lab is exactly like previous labs. For the configuration for part 1, either follow lab 2 or 3. If you are following lab 2, do all the configuration in part 1 and 2 up to task 2 in part 2. And if you are following uh, lab 3, do all the configuration in part 1. First, we verify the access to R1 LAN from R2. To do that, we ping uh, R1 from R2, and the ping is successful. Then we ping PCA from R2. Then we display the R1 running configuration by doing the show run to review the current basic configuration on R1 and verify that there is no security command related to IPS. So these are all basic configuration. Now we have to verify that we have IPS files in TFTP server uh, directory or home directory. So we have the both files here and we also have to have that TFTP obviously installed on the machine. And if you check the current directory and choose the IPS, you see the files in there. On router 1, we do the show flash. There is no directory for IPS. We are going to create a directory for IPS with MKDIR. We call it IPSDIR and confirm. Now, if we do the show flash, we should see that uh, IPSDIR that we just created. There it is. Now this part is not related to the IPS directory. I just show you this the show flash on R2, which we it has lots of uh, files from CCP. So every time you use CCP, there are lots of files created and stored in your flash. If you want to get rid of all these files, you can use this command I show you. It's a delete force command. and recursive, and then CCP EXP files, which are all on in the flash. With this command, you can get rid of all the CCP files. You can see that there is no CCP file anymore. You go back to R1, and we check the direct the flash directory. Then, if you want to see the content of that IPS DIR fo folder, you have to DIR to that folder. So this time is flash colon and then DIR IPS IPS DIR. Sorry. As you can see, there is no file in this directory. But if there is some files from previous configuration on the router, you need to remove them before starting the configuration for this lab. To do that, just follow the instruction in your lab manual. The crypto key verifies the digital signature for the master signature file. The content are uh, assigned by a Cisco private key to guarantee the authenticity and integrity at every release. Just copy the whole file, the content of that file, and paste it into the config mode of R1.
Now, if you do a show run, you should be able to see the content of the file configured on the router. So that's the one. We need to create an IPS rule name on R1. We use the command IP IPS name and we choose iOS IPS for the name of the rule. You can also specify an optional extended or a standard access control list to filter, to filter the traffic. Uh, we're not going to do that for this lab, but we can check the options available by putting the question mark at the end of command IP IPS name IPS list. Then we need to configure the IPS signature storage location in router flash memory. So IP, IPS config location, flash and IPS DIR that we just created on flash. SDEE or Cisco Security Device Event Exchange Server is a swap based intrusion detection system alert format which transport protocol specification. To use SDEE, you need to enable HTTP server. So we first do IP HTTP server, then uh, we issue the command IP IPS notify SDEE. Then we need to enable the IPS syslog support. If console logging is enabled, IPS syslog messages displays. Enable syslog if it is not enabled. Then you need to set the clock. Then verify that the timestamp services for logging is enabled. If it's not enabled, it. And to send log messages to the syslog server on PCA, use the command logging and the host uh, IP address of PCA. To see the type and level of logging enabled on R1, use the show logging command. The syslog server is already installed on PCA. We are going to use TFTPD32 in this lab. So click on the syslog here. Now we go back to router 1. iOS IPS signatures are pre grouped into categories and the categories are hierarchical. The all signature categories contains all signature in a signature release. And because the iOS IPS is not able to compile and use all of these uh, signatures contained in a signature release, uh, you shouldn't uh, unretire the all category. So what we do, we retire all category and then we unretire selected signature categories. That's what we did here. From this uh, configuration you can tell that we unretired iOS IPS basic category. Then at the end you just confirm it by entering and these signatures are configured. Then we need to apply the IPS rule to an interface. We are going to apply it to serial 000 on router 1 first. So you get the message. And also if you go back to your syslog, you should be receiving a message on syslog as well. Now we apply IPS rule to interface gigabit 01 for internal attacks, for the respond to internal attacks.
Then we save the running configuration to a startup configuration for backup. To load the iOS IPS signature package to the router, there are different methods. We are going to use TFTP in this lab. First, we verify the connectivity between PC and R1. Then we run the TFTP server. So TFTP D32. Then we make sure that we have the files there. We can also check the files from the TFTP server itself. So if you do the show directory, you can see it from here. Or you can click on that show DIR button on the TFTP server. Back to router one and uh, copy the file from the TFTP server. Immediately after the signature packages is loaded to the router, signature compiling begins. You can see the login messages if you enable the logging level 6 or above. So the signature file is loading and these are the log messages that you can see coming for uh, compiling the signature. Inside IPS DIR directory, six files are created. And to verify that the signature packages is properly compiled, use the show IP IPS signature count command to see the counts for the signature packages uh, compiled. Now use show IP IPS all command to view the IPS configuration status summary. Test the IPS rule and modify a signature, there are many ways. They can be retired and unretired, enabled and disabled, and their characteristics and actions can be changed. So first we ping uh, 0000 R of R1 from R2, and then we ping PCA from R2. This ping should be successful. Then we modify the signature. In this part, we are going to unretire the echo request signature, enable it, change the signature action to alert, and drop and reset for signature 2004 with a sub uh, signature ID of 0. Enable the syslog server if you close it from the previous step. Then from uh, R2 CLI, ping R1 serial 000 and PCA. Pings are not going to be successful because that 2004 signature we specified and is active now is an echo request signature. You can also 
check the log messages on syslog server. ICMP echo request messages and the severity is 25, which is not too high. It can range between 0 to 100. Start Zen map on PCA. Use serial 000 of R2 IP address for the scan. Choose the instant scan and start scanning. The scan might take a while. When it's finished, just click the ports host tab and see that how many open ports did Nmap or Zenmap find on R2. You should see the syslog uh, entries on router 1 console or the syslog server if it is enabled. The descriptions should include phrases uh, such as TCP null packet and TCP sin or fin packet. Based on these outputs, answer the questions in lab manual. Thank you.